uh, from this sacred desk. We thank you, Lord God, for those in my hearing, Lord God. We pray that we would not just be hearers, but be doers of your word. Now let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord, my strength, and my redeemer. And the people of God said, amen, amen. amen. Come on, give God another hand of praise if you can. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And we thank God for one of the best musicians, amen, on this side, amen, of the Jordan, my boy Daniel, amen. He be doing his thing, y'all. Come on, give him praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. I told Dr. Bates, I beat Jesus up this morning. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all missed it. That was my best attempt to be funny. I'm not going to be funny no more. Hallelujah. Y'all making me work hard already. Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to be coming out of the 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. Uh, I have no one particular verse. Matter of fact, I'm going to just try to, uh, with the time allowed it, amen. They put something up on the board. Amen. They put all of it there. Amen. Motivation to lead. Amen. Out of 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. Amen. Thank you for referencing the word of God. You may be seated, amen, because we're just going to get, we're going to be just walking through some stuff. Amen. Thank you so very much for that. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we're going to be looking at uh, 2 Corinthians. We're just going to be picking out some stuff out of there. Say amen to that. Amen. As we look at it, motivating, motivation to lead, motivation to lead. Uh, earlier this year, early, early this year, our man of God, he simplified for us our purpose. Amen. Uh, amen. He simplified for us our purpose. Amen. He said that we were going to worship the Lord. Amen. That we were going to love one another and that we were going to lead the lost to Christ. That we were going to lead the lost to Christ. So he simplified it. He made it simple. Right now, he put it so it can be reachable. Somebody say reachable. Somebody say reachable. He put it so that we can all reach. Amen. So we can all have a part. We can all have a productive part in the process. Amen. Of, of, of church growth, amen, and edifying and building up, amen. And so he made sure, so he put it reachable so we can, we can all have a part in it. There's not one of those uh, purposes that you cannot play a part in. Say amen to that. We can worship the true and living God. Isn't that right? I said, isn't that right? We can worship the true and living God. Matter of fact, the word of God tells us too that we should worship because that's our reasonable service is to worship. And then, of course, as we are born-again believers and we are uh, children of the loving God, we should love one another. Say amen to that. I say we should love one another, but we know we have issues in that area. Say amen to that. I say say amen to that. Amen. And the Word of God tells us that we should love one another, that they may know that we are his disciples. We love, that's how, how we love and how we treat one another. Say amen to this, you all. How we treat and respond to each other uh, is signified through the world. And, that's, and that's, that's, what, that's, that's key right there, you all. It signifies to the world that we have something in common. We have something in common. That we both, that we all, we both love the true and living God. And then when they see that we are worshipers, and that we respond to each other correctly, and then we can it, it make it easier for us to lead them to Christ. Say amen to that. Listen, don't nobody want to come to your God if your God look like you and you got a sour face. <laughs> don't nobody want to come to your God if your God act like you and you mean and honorary. Say amen to this. Don't nobody want to come to your God if you hating on folks. Amen. And now you testifying how, how good God is. You testifying that, that you love the true and living God, but you don't like nobody in the church. I mean, I mean, you don't like nobody in church. Amen. You got an issue with everybody. Say amen to this. Hallelujah. I be sitting, I be talking to folk. I ain't going to say no name. <laughs> I ain't going to say no name. And I be like, they got issues with everything. Hallelujah. How they put the tartar paper on the thing. I don't know. I don't know. As long as it works. Say amen to that. As long as it works. As long as it works. And so, we, so how we respond uh, is very crucial, you all, to leading people to Christ. And our man of God has done an incredible job this year. 
amen, just walking that thing out for us, amen, sharing us through the word of God how we should worship, sharing through the word of God how we should love one another, sharing through the word of God how we, how we should lead. Say amen to this. And so I want to kind of just kind of really uh, 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 touch on that just a little bit. Uh, that last one here, it says that uh, I lead, amen, I lead. And, I, and I, so I want to just deal with my motivation to lead. What's my motivation to lead? Because some of us need to be motivated. Say amen to that. And so in 2 Corinthians, it's going to do that. It's going to do that. And I'm just going to start reading some of this in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Very familiar passage of scripture. I'm quite sure you know it. It says, for we know that if our earthly house is, this tabernacle is dissolved, we have a building of God, a hand not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For if this is for, in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon our house which is from heaven. If so be it clothed, we shall not be found naked. Somebody say naked. For, 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 uh, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, being burdened, not for what we are unclothed, but clothed upon uh, our mortality, mightly be swallowed up of life. For now he that has watched us wrought us, the same self thing is God, who also given unto us an earnest spirit. Somebody say an earnest spirit. Somebody say an earnest spirit. This earnest spirit made is the spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. One of my motivations, you all, is to be filled with the spirit of the living God. Say amen to this. Now listen, if you, if you are a born-again believer, that should be one of, your, one of your motivations. That should be one of your desires to be filled with the living God. Amen. Because if you're not filled with the living God, you're leaning on your own understanding. You're trusting your own ability. Matter of fact, the word of God says don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because, listen, when we're drunk with wine, when we're, in, when we're drunk with the things of the world, then we're being influenced by the world. And what we want to be, amen, is filled and with the Holy Spirit. Watch this. And be influenced by the Holy Spirit. Say amen to this. And so when I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, you all, I have this earnest desire to stay full. My motivation is to stay full. Somebody say stay full. Somebody say stay full. Now watch what it says in verse number six. Therefore, we always have confidence knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. But watch this. We walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, and I say willing, whether to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so watch this. My first motivation, you all, is to be in the presence of God. My sec I guess my second motivation, because being filled with the Holy Spirit really wasn't in my notes, but I saw that. I thought that was very important. And so my second, my second motivation, you all, is to be in the presence of the living God. To be in the presence of the living God. And, my, listen, and every believer should desire and be motivated to be in the presence of the living God. But there's a process, you all. There's a time and there's a period for that. Now, you all, we got to go through some stuff. And that's why, we, that's why the word of God says, listen, we walk by faith and not by sight because we are here and we got to go through some things and so we got to we got to groan through some things we got to press through some things you all we're going to have some troubles down here and so since i'm going to be down here for a minute i need the help of the holy spirit i need the help of the holy spirit you all to help me to walk by faith and not by sight. Say amen to this. Now watch this, you all. I don't deny what I see, but I'm not motivated by what I see. Oh, oh wait a minute. Let me say that again. I don't deny what I see. I don't deny what I'm going through, but I'm not motivated. Hallelujah. I'm not moved by what I'm going through. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel because I walk by what? I say, I walk by what and not by what? Come on, give God another hand of praise right there because that's good. Because that's my motivation to be in the presence of God, to be in the presence of God. And then now watch this. My third motivation here is, watch this, is to be motivated because of future judgment. 
I'm motivated, first, first of all, by future judgment. Number one, I'm motivated to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Number two, I'm motivated to be in the presence of God. And now I'm motivated, you all, for future judgment. Look at verse number nine. It says, wherefore we labor, whether we be present or absent, that we may be acceptable unto him. Somebody say acceptable unto him. Somebody say, come on now, come on, y'all. I'm in the Bible, I'm in the Bible. Somebody say, be acceptable of him. In other words, watch this. One of my motivations, you all, is to be something that he recognizes. To be something that he recognizes. To be something that's well-pleasing to him. Say amen to this. Whether I labor in the body or absent, my motivation, you all, is to be well-pleasing, is to be something that God recognizes. Because I'm going through some stuff. Amen. I'm going, there's other people identifying me. There's some other people watching me. So I got to be careful, you all, that, that I make sure that my behavior is not uncomely. I got to make sure that I'm not acting like the world. Say amen to this. I said, say amen to this. And so I got to watch this. And so as I'm going through this, you all, I'm recognizing that I want to make sure as I go through, Walter, that, watch this, that God recognized me as one of his children. That God recognized me. I want to be acceptable, watch this, not unto man, but unto him. Because it was God who delivered me from a faith worse than death. Say amen to this. It was God through his son, amen, that gave me righteousness. Say amen to this, you all. It was God that saved my life, amen, and gave and, 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 and freed me from the penalty of sin. And so since God did all that, I want to be make sure, I want to make sure that I'm well pleasing to him. I want to make sure that I'm acceptable to him. Somebody say acceptable. So now watch this verse number 10 says, for we all must, watch this, because we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Listen, the reason why I listen, the reason why I need a good dose of act right because I'm going to appear before him. And watch this, and I'm going to receive everything that I've done in my body, whether it be good or bad. Now watch this, you all. That ought to help somebody right there. Because the word of God said that we will all, somebody say all. Every believer will, be, will appear before him, the judgment seat. Somebody say judgment seat. Now that's a good place to be, you all, because you don't want to be at the great white throne. If you're at the great right room, that means you missed the judgment seat. Say amen to that. But listen, you all, we cannot get comfortable knowing that we're going to miss the great right throne because still we got to appear before a true and living God to receive in our body what we've done, whether it be good or bad. Somebody, listen, turn to your name and say, are you ready to be judged? No, you're not. No, you're not. Ain't nobody ready to be judged when you really look back over your life and you think it over. Say amen to this. Matter of fact, just some stuff you did last night. Say amen to this. The attitude you came in here with this morning. Tell me that you ain't ready to be judged. But thank God this judgment is not into condemnation. Thank God for that. Come on, give God a hand of praise for that. That this judgment is not unto condemnation. Amen. But we're going to receive our just reward for what we have done in the body. So now watch what it says again, verse number 10. For we all will appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Are you still here? Are you still here? Now watch verse 11. My motivation. My motivation. My motivation. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Watch this. Knowing that, watch this, that there's going to be a great day of the Lord. Now, listen, not only are we going to be judged, but the entire world will be judged. Watch this. This ought to motivate us, you all. Watch this. My next motivation, to share. To, but listen, there should, listen, I don't care. There's nobody in your life that you would want to, that you ought to want to see go to hell. Mm. I, 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 let me say that again. I, there's nobody in your life you ought to see want to go to hell. When you know who our true and living God is, and knowing the terror or the reverence of God or the fear of God. Say amen to this. People say, I'm ready to stand before a true and living God. You really don't know what you're saying when you say that. Because everyone who came into the presence of this true and living God, they fell as dead men. 
And it wasn't until he gave them a word of comfort that they were able, amen, to stand in his presence. But we're going to watch this one day, you all, stand before his presence to receive judgment. But not only that, because we know the terror of the Lord, we ought to be persuading men. We ought to be leading those who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior. I say we ought to be leading those, you all. I say, I, come on, I say we should be leading those. There's people in your house who are not saved. And because you know that there's going to be a day of judgment, you know the terror of the Lord is coming. And while the blood is still running in both of your veins, you ought to be sharing with them the gospel of the true and living God. Can you tell your neighbor, are you motivated to share? Come on, tell your neighbor, are you motivated to share? Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade man. But we are made manifest unto God. We are made manifest unto God. In other words, watch this. As we share the things of God, God, we are manifested unto God. And so watch this. It's not about us, but it's always about him. I said it's not about us, but it's always about him. Say amen to this. I said say amen to this. And so now we are, and so we are manifested unto God. And I trust also made manifest into your consciousness. And so, in other words, watch this. As I'm sharing the message of salvation, I hope that you see that I am true. I'm a true child of God. I hope, watch this, as I'm sharing the gospel message, first of all, I hope I'm somebody that God recognizes. Because you know that there's going to be a whole bunch of people going to say, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? You know there's going to be a whole bunch of people who say, well, didn't we cast out demons in your name? And he's going to say, report from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Man, that's a terrible day. I say, that's a terrible day to do all this stuff and still miss heaven. To be doing all these things, quote, in the name of God, and God don't even recognize you or identify you as his own. Say amen to this. Because I think, I think one of the problems in the church, we have a lot of secret saints. Undercover saints. Don't nobody know you say. Matter of fact, you're not even sure you say you're so undercover. Say amen to this. But if we're going to be successful and motivating and leading people to Christ, we got to be something that God recognizes, and then they got to be, watch this, they, the people who are we're witnessing to, should recognize that there's something different in us. Say amen to that. I say they got to recognize that there's something different in us. Our attitudes should be different. Our demeanor should be different. Our behavior should be different. They should not question, hallelujah, that you're trying to lead them to Christ and question, are you a, are you a Christian too? Say amen to that. So now watch what the word of God says. Watch what the word of God says so as we go. And so my next motivation as we go down to verse number 14 is that we are motivated by the love of Christ. We're motivated by the love of Christ. For the love of Christ, watch what it does. It constrains us. Because, rest, because of this judge, that if anyone died, then all are dead. Watch what it says. The love of God constrains. Or somebody say constrains. The word of God, this word constrain means, watch this, it holds us together. It holds us together. It, it, it brings us to the love of God to be holding us together. Let me say that again. If we are going to be identified with the world, the love of God should be the one motivating factor that's holding us together, that's keeping us together. In other words, the love of God ought to be keeping us from being divided because a house divided cannot stand. Say amen to this. It's not about just, and then also in the physical and the natural, uh, but also, but we're talking about spiritual because we're talking about trying to lead other people to Christ. But even in the physical, the love of God ought to hold you together. You ought not be falling apart over everything. Say amen. You act like you're the only one going through some stuff. You're not the only one going through some stuff. But as a child of God, how we go through is, is significant and important. Say amen to that. We ought not be going through as if we have no hope. Say amen to this, you all. The love of God ought to, it, it should constrain us. It ought to hold us together, you all, in every situation. Somebody say, hold yourself together. Somebody say, hold yourself together. 
And then as I go, as I move, as I move, as I move, so not only does it, the love of God constrains us and it holds us together, if one died, then all died. Watch this. I motivated you all to share the message. Verse number 17, we know it. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Somebody say new. Somebody say new. Because of the love of Christ that has constrained us, because that Christ died for all, because I've accepted what he has done for me on the cross, I have accepted that he has paid the price for the penalty of sin, and I have made that confession that the Lord Jesus, amen, and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, that I am now saved. Are y'all still here? Because I have made that confession, now I am a new creature. Now, I know back in the day we say, well, I looked at my hands, and my hands look new. No, they, your hands ain't new. It's not about your hands. It's not about uh, 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 your feet. None of all all that stuff. It's it's about, he says, listen, I'm a new creature because I have been converted. I have been changed. I was once dead in sin, but now I'm made alive in Jesus Christ. That's the new creation. Say amen to this. I said, say amen to this. I am new because I am now a born-again believer. I'm a born-again believer, and so now because I am a born-again believer, I am a new creation. But now because of this, my hands out of change. It should not be holding the stuff I was holding before I got saved. Say amen to this. My feet should be new. It ought not be going to the same place as I was going before I got saved. Say amen to this. Hallelujah. My mouth out of change. I ought not be cussing out to everybody. I know you cuss out a couple of people, but you cuss out of everybody. Say amen. And so when I, and so now that I'm a new creation, you all, and I'm in this sanctification process, there ought to be a change going on inside of me. Say amen to this, because I am a different person. I am growing. Matter of fact, watch this. That's the key. Let me see. Let me see. I said I am, but are you growing in Christ? Are you, are you part of the sanctification process? Paul said, I'm working out my soul's salvation. In other words, he saw, Paul says, watch, Peter said, listen, I'm going to be adding to you my faith. I'm going to be growing my faith because, watch this, I want to be something that God recognizes. I want to be something that God identifies with. Say amen to this. I want to be something that people, when people identify me, with me and my conscience, I want to know, that I want them to know that I've been changed. Matter of fact, the closest people to you are to be able to identify, you know what, he used to act like something different, but now he don't act the same no more. Say amen to this. Because I am a new creation, all things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Somebody say new. I am now brand new in God. Verse number 18 says, my motivation, watch what it says, all things are of God. All things are of God who has, watch this, reconciled us unto himself by Jesus Christ. All things are of God who have reconciled us. My motivation, my motivation, my motivation, I've been reconciled. In other words, I've been changed, Deacon James. I've been changed. I've been changed. God has changed me. He has changed me. He has regenerated me. He's renewed me. Say amen to this. Say amen to this. I am no longer dead to sin that I'm made alive in God. I have received reconciliation. Say amen to this. this. God has restored favor to me. I am now back in friendship with God. Hallelujah. I was, I, are, y'all still, are y'all still here? All things are of God who has, watch this, reconciled us. You are reconciled because of what Jesus did for us on the cross and because of the love of God. And I've been reconciled. Somebody say, I've been changed. Now, I know that's hard because sometimes you all, we don't act changed. But we got to act changed, you all. We got to behave change. Say amen to this. We got to lost it. I tell my kids all the time, there's nothing greater than the favor of God. The favor of God is better than money. Say amen to this. And my kids have seen the favor of God on my life. And so every time God does something miraculous, I say favor. See, y'all ain't ready. 
Because, listen, when I lost my job in 2008 over at Penske Truck Leasing, man, I was bringing home $1,000 a week. A thousand, I went from $1,000 a week to zero. But we, listen, you, if you look at me, I ain't miss no meals. My wife never came home and the lights was off. I'm saying, I'm talking about the favor of God. I say the favor of God. Say amen to this. And so because, watch this, and so I've been, I've been restored. Somebody say restored. I received, the, I, I received, I've been reconciled unto God unto himself through Christ Jesus. And watch what he did. He has given unto us the ministry. Somebody say ministry. Somebody say ministry. He's given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. Now, I hear a lot of people, a lot of millennials, a, a, a lot of baby boomers, X generation, always saying, I don't know what I'm called to do. Well, now, guess what? I'm going to help you. If you have received the ministry, if, you have been, if you've been reconciled by God, the word of God says you have now received your purpose. You have received your motivation to lead. Your purpose, what you've been called to do, is reconcile others. It's to bring others into the friendship of God. And so I don't know why you missed that. Maybe you want the glamour and the glitz and all that other stuff. Say amen to that. It's not really all about that. Matter of fact, you remember the purpose-driven life? Day number one, it ain't about you. It ain't about people seeing you. It's not about people seeing, getting your name called. It's about bringing others into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Are you still here? And so, no matter how young you are, no matter how old you are, you have a ministry. Say amen to this. Your ministry is reconciliation, bringing others back into the friendship of God. Say amen to this. I said say amen to this. So now watch what he says here. So all things are of God who has reconciled us unto himself by Jesus Christ and has given, somebody say, given me. Somebody say, given me. My ministry, come on, say it, giving me my ministry of reconciliation. Now you know what you've been called to do. You've been called to reconcile, giving us the ministry of reconciliation. Watch what it says, verse number 19. To with have God was in Christ, watch this, reconciling the world unto himself and not putting on their trespassing unto them and has committed unto us the words of reconciliation. Watch this. Let me read that again. To with God was in Christ reconciling the world. Are y'all still here? For in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word was manifest. Say amen to this. So God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not in putting their trespasses on them. In other words, watch this, not giving them what they deserve. I say not giving them what they deserve because we all truly deserve to die. I say we all deserve to die. I say we all deserve to die. But God in Christ was not putting unto them their transgressions, their willful disobedience to, the God, to God. He was not putting unto them their willful transgressions. Watch, watch this. Watch this. But, but unto them who has committed unto us the word. Somebody say the word of reconciliation. And so watch this. You don't even, you don't even need to know what to say. God has already given you what to say. God is, God is telling you what I'm telling you to tell to them is to be reconciled, is to be restored, is to be changed, is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. You ain't got to get all deep. Say amen to this. You ain't got to get all deep. Matter of fact, it's, easy. Listen, it's a lot easier when you simplify this thing. We overcomplicate it. It's not that complicated. Listen, when you came to Christ, it wasn't complicated. So now why you, now, now why you want to complicate it? It's still simple. Tell your neighbor, it's still simple. The words of reconciliation has not changed. My motivation that I am leading others to Christ and God through the Holy Spirit will tell me what to say. Be reconciled. Can you say that word with me? Be reconciled. 
be changed, be restored, receive the favor of God. Restore, come back into friendship with God. Say amen to this. I said say amen to this. So now watch what it says. Verse number 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. I like this. It says we are, ambass we are God's representatives on earth. We ought to represent, represent God on earth, you all, as his representatives. And the word of God says, watch what it says. Now as we are ambassadors for Christ, through God did beseech you by us. I love this expression. It, means, it literally means that God is begging people through you to be reconciled. Wait a minute, let me say it again. We are ambassadors of God, and God has beseech us, beseech others. And so God is really saying, I'm begging people to be reconciled. I'm literally getting down on my hands and knees, begging people not to go to hell through you. Now watch this, you all. God cannot get down on his hands and knees if you ain't humble. If you're not in the position to, for God to use you. God wants to use you to beg people to come to Christ. Now, we beg for everything else. Say amen to this. You beg for time. You beg for money. Say amen to this. But, we are too, but we're not humble enough to get on our hands and knees so God can use us to beg people to come to Christ. What is your motivation? Why are you here? I heard a, a young preacher, I had to correct him one day, and he said, well, I, I, come to, I, come to Sunday, I come to Sunday service so I can lead people to Christ. Well, that ain't why you come to Sunday service. We don't come to Sunday service to lead people to Christ, although we do. We come to Sunday service to receive messages like this, to be instructed on how we should live. Because this time is for the believer. It's an institutional hour. Somebody say institutional hour. It's a time for you to receive instruction on how you ought to live, on how you should, and what should be motivating you. Say amen to this. I say say amen to this. To worship the true and living God, to be prepared to serve, to go back out into this world and beg people to come to Christ. But listen, it, 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 it takes some effort on your part because they got to know that your life's been changed first. It takes some effort on your part. They, listen, people believe the world, the church is a bunch of hypocrites. It's not because the church is a hypocrite, because you're a hypocrite. Because they're watching you say one thing and do another. They're watching your motivation. Say amen to this. We're motivated to go. We, we're taking trips all over the world. Amen. We're going to Cancun and doing, and I ain't got nothing against all that. But, we, but it seems when I be on Facebook watching social media, your motivation is to, is to be uh, over indebted, overindulged in the things of the world. And, but that should not be your motivation as a born again believer. Your motivation as a born again believer is to be in position, you all, to lead the lost to Christ. And now, if you're going to all them places, please tell somebody about Jesus. Say amen, because y'all ain't going to stop going. Say amen. You, you still going to go, but as you go, remember your motivation is that you are an ambassador. And God is using you to lead others to Christ. Because the Jamaicans, they need to come to Jesus too. Say amen. I said say amen. So now watch this as I close. And so now we then are ambassadors for Christ through God beseech you through us. We pray in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled. Our prayer, somebody say our prayer. Somebody say our prayer is that you be reconciled unto God. Now, now watch this, you all, because I remember I was reading in the book of John, the 17th chapter. 
And Jesus said, I don't pray for the world. I don't pray for the world. And, and Dr. Turner, you know, because we talked about this, that messed me up. And so for a long time, I was telling people, well, you can't be praying for unbelievers. You can't pray for unbelievers. Jesus said, you, if, if Jesus said, you pray to me. You can't pray for unbelievers. And, and, and in some regard, that's somewhat true, but there's no, there's no contradiction in the word of God. We just hear that I pray for you in Christ's stead, that you be reconciled. Now, prayer is action. Prayer is action. For the laborers, for the, for the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. I think what we're getting in trouble is that you're praying for someone else to go when you should be going. Say amen to this. You're in the room with someone who needs to know Jesus instead of you telling them you're praying for them. But then you're not even letting them know you're praying. You're praying to yourself. Say amen to this. When, when we read this, it's communicating. Jesus, we're, we're, we're communicating. We're talking to them. And so we're going to that individual and say, listen, my prayer for you, Mr. James, that you be reconciled to God. And so what does it mean to be reconciled? To receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Verse number 21, and I'm done. For he has made him to be sin. God made Jesus to be sin for us. For we know no sin, for who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus did all that, went to the cross to give us the opportunity to re be redeemed, reconciled back unto God. Now he expects us to take his work back into the world. Jesus is still at the right hand of the Father making intercessory prayers for us, for the accuser who's always accusing the brother. When Jesus comes back, you all, it's to establish his kingdom. Amen. To take us up. You are responsible with the aid and the help of the Holy Spirit to do the work. Stop asking Jesus to do what he's asking you to do. Come on, give God a hand of praise. Come on, give him a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Did you get anything out of this word today?